In the days before public health care, he cared. For almost 40 years, one man worked around the clock, tending to the well-being of Southern Alberta's fledgling frontier communities. With patients spread across many miles, he took to the roads and then to the skies. He was an innovator, a pioneer, and a prairie trailblazer. His name, Dr. Alexander Gladstone Scott. Can you imagine a small town doctor with an airplane visiting patients all around this district a hundred years ago? I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal that, that he would take on that role of not only serving this community and all the people that were here at the time, but also the surrounding areas. The Sentinel started off very small, <laughs> very, very, very small, and soon uh, grew to be a, a metropolis of enough to warrant being a village and eventually a town. And in that time, we had many colorful characters who came. Well, of course, one of those would be Dr. Alexander Gladstone Scott. And I think what drove him was his preoccupation to make sure that he provided prairie folks with medical attention, regardless of where they lived or what they happened to be suffering from. So my name is Merv Scott. So Dr. Scott was a brother of my grandfather. So in other words, Dr. Scott is my great uncle. When I retired, I started looking into my family history. But when I uncovered the, in my research that Dr. Scott was a family member, it wasn't long before I decided I better do some research and learn more about what Dr. Scott did during his lifetime. And their conclusion was that he was the first flying doctor in Western Canada. Amazing. So what I learned was Dr. Scott had pursued his education in Brandon, went on to Winnipeg and on to Toronto, where he finally got his medical degree, then started looking around where he would have a practice. And by following the clippings, I learned that he had looked at several towns before settling on Bazano. Dr. Scott was very innovative in that way. He had a structure, which uh, two parts, which included his office and residence. Before moving up to the site of where the hospital is today, what intrigues me more than anything about history is the photographs that have been preserved. Now this is one I've never seen before, the old hospital with the nurses residence. And here of course is when the new one was officially dedicated with Margaret and Alexander. This rock came from the Preemption quarter down south. Let's see, 1909 to 2009. For a hundred years of family farming within Vulcan County. About 1944, I guess. Dad and Mom took me to Bizzano, because that's where the doctor was. The only doctor was Dr. Scott. And we went up this road down here a mile east up across and through into the lease up to the river and there was a ferry up there called the Braden Ferry and crossed that with the car and that old 27 Chev and went on up to Bizzano. Dr. Scott examined me and said, oh, he said, you got appendicitis and he said, it looks like it's just about to rupture. So he said, I'm going to keep you in the hospital here and he said, We'll look after you overnight. And he said, I'll operate and take it out first thing in the morning. Dr. Scott removed my tonsils. He had me in a rocking chair. He blocked the rockers and I held on to the arms. And I kept telling myself, it can't hurt any worse than the tonsillitis. <laughs> and uh, he took my tonsils out sitting in that rocking chair. I know this uh, one guy anyway, he got into an accident on a thrash machine. He got his jaw broke and so on. He was pretty well, well, he was kind of bleeding to death. And yet he, he went to doctor in Zana, Dr. Scott, and he uh, patched him up and everything. And, but this was, uh, he said, this was John Barch, he said that once he got to see the doctor, he he felt he was safe. 
But no, everybody that I know of liked Dr. Scott. First thing I knew about Dr. Scott was I, I, when I came to this community, that's some 44 years ago, the, the name kept coming up and up and up and I didn't really know much about him and uh, then I found out that he was uh, a doctor and then I found out that he was a flying doctor. It, it's easy to say what's special is the, his commitment to his patients and his community and to his practice. What's unique about him, perhaps, is that uh, he's going down in history as being one of Canada's earliest pioneers of being a flying doctor, arguably being Western Canada's first flying doctor. One person uh, did contact me to uh, say that her parents knew of Dr. Scott and that they remembered uh, his little uh, gypsy moth airplane motor as it would pass over their fields of their farm on his way to another patient. And when you hear stories like that, you realize this wasn't just a, the common horse and buggy story. This fellow had gone the extra mile. My first memory was when Mr. Tucker was sick. He lived, they lived across the road from Kinnandale School and they got Dr. Scott to come down to him. And we were amazed because we had never seen a little airplane before and it landed. So we were pretty awestruck by it. Well, even the teacher, I think, was pretty excited to see this plane come in and land, actually land just out not far from the school. It was quite, quite an event. Most communities were not served by doctors. Um... Most doctors didn't really make a great living at that time, so they were rare commodities. Um, so to, for a community to have a doctor and, uh, and have a doctor that's inspired to find the patient, to go to the patient, that's, that's probably, I would say, the most interesting thing about Dr. Scott. Just this idea that, geez, we, these people can't come to me I know they need help, well, why don't I go to them? When I started reading the research that I had uncovered about Dr. Scott, it became clear to me that he was part of our family because I'd learned that he was a quiet man, unassuming man. I think as well there seemed to be a twist of humor involved and as he loved to play practical jokes from according to one article that I read on his friends in the Bassano area. But probably he'd be embarrassed to hear some of the stories that go on about his, his claims to fame because I think in his mind he was just trying to reach out and help as many people as he could. So anyway, he come and got me in the bed in the morning he says, How are you? You ready to have that operation? Oh, I guess so. So he picks me up in his arms and the way he goes, heads into the operating room. When he was walking through the door into the operating room, he banged my head on the sill over the door. And, oh, gosh, he said, I'm sorry about that, but that might help dead in the pain. <laughs> yeah, funny. And I remember Mum was in to see him one day. And, uh, of course, I had to see everything, and she had something on her wrist that he was, he, he cut it open and was doing something with it. And I was watching it, I was brave. Pretty soon I slithered down the side of his desk, I fainted, <laughs> and he just grinned. He says, oh, I have one of those every day. <laughs> well, he was a great doctor, as far as I know. And he had quite a sense of humor. When he did my uh, examination for the Army, he said, yeah, you'll stop a bullet. <laughs> so that's about the way it was. Well, had a spinal, didn't, uh, they didn't put you to sleep, not then. He kept pricking my feet with, a, with a, a needle. Once I couldn't feel that anymore, well, he operated. There was a mirror up there, a mirror about so big. And I looked, started looking and I could see him operating in that. I said, what are you doing? Well, I'm taking your appendix out. I said, 
you cut with that big pair of scissors? How do you know what size scissors I'm using? Well, I said, I can see you in the mirror. Oh my God, you weren't supposed to be watching that. Did a little more work pretty soon. He held this little thing up about that long and it was kind of wiggling and twisting around. He said, there's your appendix, he said. That's what was causing all the trouble. And he said, it's all pink, he said. Bought another day and you could have been very sick. I think it was just that natural charisma that appealed to people. And even after he left, his name was not forgotten. Of course, the new hospital uh, with the the cornerstone name in his honor, and the Dr. Scott Apartments. We, uh, we continue to honor him today because of the man he was. And we've had many notable doctors who have devoted their lives to this town, but 38 to 40 years was, uh, was quite an incredible record. Well, Dr. Alexander Gladstone Scott, it's been an eventful day here. We are now looking at the cornerstone that you laid on August 11, 1959, having been the founder of Bizano's First Hospital between Calgary and Medicine Hat, an entrepreneur, and an inspirational person. Thank you, Dr. Scott and Margaret, for having been here. You know, Dr. Scott gave us this idea that things could be better all the time, all the way through his career. That, you know, being a doctor is good, but being a doctor that can get to patients uh, under all circumstances virtually is going to be better. And then building a hospital is going to be a good thing. And expanding that hospital and making it an institution. I mean, he just, he just did something that was so above and beyond it's just, he would have been a fantastic person to meet. I think that was really important to them. I think they really appreciated that he would come out like that. Because there's not too many that do. He was, uh, that's all I ever heard about, that, you know, the things that he did. He was an old time doctor and he was good. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next generation. Do the Dr. Scotts of the world be forgotten, the pioneers of, of our country, the ones that helped form the backbone of our country, will they be remembered then? That'll be a very interesting tale to watch.